Hi, I'm Meg. Welcome to Plant Fit Meg. Welcome back to the channel. Today I thought it would be fun to dig into my New Year's video from last year and see how I did with my New Year's resolutions, what tips I gave in that video, and what I'd like to add and share that would be helpful for this year. So I'm essentially going to review my New Year's resolution video, see how I did throughout the year and share that, and then let you know what my plans are for 2023 and give you some tips for reaching your New Year's resolutions if you've made them for this year. I'm hoping the tech works out okay for this video. Let's jump right in. And this year I really wanna go for it. I really wanna go for it. Nice. <laughs> Today I want to discuss New Year's resolutions and my plans for the new year and my New Year's resolutions, as well as some tips to make resolutions into a reality. Because a lot of times we make resolutions, we have the best intentions, we're feeling great, we're feeling motivated, new year, new me, right? New year, new you. And then things kind of fall apart within a matter of weeks or months. So the new year can be a great time to start something new. It can be really motivating. It feels like a fresh start. It's a new month. It's a new year. And it can be really, really motivating. Um, but it can also be difficult if you kind of set yourself up for a resolution that's really lofty and then you're not quite able to reach it and then you just kind of get overwhelmed and let it go completely and just abandon it. So I'm sure I'll get into that in this video, but basically start where you are. Start with a resolution that is actually reasonable, whatever your final goal or outcome that you want is. Try to work that back and reverse engineer it so that you're starting with what you you can do now, what you can do in this moment, what you can do today or tomorrow or this week, and not just looking at the giant goal ahead of you or the outcome, focusing more on the process and having fun with it. Let's see what else I have to say. So I want to discuss how we can turn those resolutions and those good intentions into action and into progress and getting to where you want to go. I'll link my New Year's resolution video from last year up here as well in case you want to check that out. And I also have a reboot your resolution video that I made actually in April of last year and I'll leave that linked as well so you can check that out for more tips if you're interested. Yeah, the last couple of years I've been putting out videos at the beginning of April doing something that I like to call Accountable April. And I find that New Year's is so oversaturated with people talking about new habits, new routines, changes, all these things. Of course, I'm adding to that volume of stuff that is out there about New Year's resolutions. But I find putting something out in April after, you know, we're a few months into the new year and it's like, okay, what were my resolutions? Have I been doing them? Have I not? Let's reevaluate and make some new plans or targets for the month of April. So let me know if you want to see Accountable April this year for 2023 to keep us on target for the year. So in the past, I have always sort of underestimated myself and sort of let fear stand in my way of what I want to do or things that I thought I would want to do but didn't think I was capable of or didn't think I was strong enough to do or just not capable and not able to do. And after regaining my health and losing 80 pounds and being in weight loss maintenance mode for a while, I feel so empowered to do the things that I've always wanted to do. Yeah, my recommendation here is don't wait. I said that, you know, once I regained my health and once I lost the weight, now I've sort of let go of fear and I'm doing things that I've always wanted to do. But I recommend not waiting. Don't wait until you've regained your health or until you've lost the weight. Start now. If there's something that you want to do that you're afraid of, 
but that you think will be good for you, helpful for you, fun, joyful, go for it. Give it a go. And if you love it and you want to keep doing it, great, awesome. And if not, then that's valuable information and you can tweak and make changes and try something different. And last year that included working on push-ups and calisthenics and handstands and improving those things. And this year I've decided that I want to get as fit and as strong as possible. I want to build muscle and do it in an absolutely really healthy way, a sustainable way. I also took a break from YouTube fairly recently and was kind of reflecting on the past year and trying to figure some things out for myself and reevaluating what I want to put on the channel and what I want to share and bring forward. And I was actually diagnosed with inattentive ADHD, which is a whole nother story unto itself. So if you're interested in that diagnosis situation and more about that, let me know and maybe I can make a video about that. Um, but that gave me a greater understanding of how my brain works and how I can work with it to make things work for myself. Yeah, so I think this is a recurring theme in my life that moving into the fall and winter season, I start to feel a little bit down, a little bit like I just want to hibernate and hide away a little. And I don't think there's necessarily anything wrong with that. I think it is somewhat natural when there's less light and it's getting colder and things like this. But at the same time, taking care of my mental health and doing what I can to feel better and to improve my mood and improve my situation. So things that have been really helpful to me have been journaling, dance, movement in general, yoga, listening to music slowing down, taking time for myself, really focusing more on self-care. And I think now that I know that I have this time of year that I feel the need to slow down, that's valuable information for me to carry forward into next year and kind of plan and be more prepared and know that it's coming and expect it and be prepared for it so that hopefully I feel better. I don't feel the need to take a big break or anything like that. And I can continue to share content and connect with you here on the channel and on social media. And the ADHD thing is a whole nother component, a whole nother thing. But the takeaway there is really to do what works for you. And what works for me or the next person might not necessarily work for you. So it's about getting to know yourself and getting to know what makes sense for you, what your lifestyle is like, what is workable and reasonable for you, and what you can work towards and have success with. We're all capable of making these positive changes. We're all capable of eating a healthier diet or losing weight and feeling better. But there are slightly different paths to get there. My recommendations for the foundations stay the same. So eating a mostly whole food plant-based diet, getting moving, managing stress, sleep, having good relationships having time for self-care, all these things are components, but how we actually manage that and get to improving those things looks a little different for everyone. So it's a bit of a choose your own adventure on how you get there and make it sustainable for you. So for 2022, I want to get as fit and strong as possible. For the past several years, I've joked with my husband about getting jacked and every time January comes around I joke with them and I, I say oh this is the year I'm gonna get jacked and I you know <laughs> pull my muscles out right and I'm like oh you know I'm gonna get jacked this year and it's always just kind of been a joke it's never been something that I've actually worked towards or actually done much about 
So I did work really hard this year to build some muscle, to get stronger, and to build my muscles up. I will insert some photos here so you can see sort of the progress that I've made over the past year. I was going to the gym really consistently, about four-ish, four to five days a week usually, lifting weights, lifting heavy, fueling myself. And I was really happy with the progress I was making. And things went a little bit off track with our move. So we moved across the country. That was obviously huge <laughs> and took a lot of time and energy. And it was stressful. There was a lot going on. So it took me some time to find a gym here in Vancouver and kind of get back into the rhythm and get back to my routine. I'm getting back to that now, going to the gym regularly and working on getting stronger and feeling good. So it's been of a bit of a mixed bag, but I'd say overall, I did really focus on getting stronger and I did get stronger. And in 2022, I want to really focus on building strength and building muscle and being as strong and as fit as possible. And I'm going to take you guys along on this journey with me and maybe share some workouts or share uh, what I'm doing, what I'm eating, all this kind of stuff. So it's going to be really fun. So I did share some of my journey. I did share my, some workouts and shared what I was eating and things like that. And I have a day in the life video that I filmed with my dear friend Charity. And it was a day in the life workout routine, what I ate throughout the day. Um, so that was really fun to film and share. It's harder to film in the gym that I'm in now because it's much busier. And I also don't have a gym buddy to film me. Um, and it's too busy to kind of set up a tripod and all that jazz. So eventually I would like to share more of what I'm doing in the gym and maybe even share some home workouts and things like that because I do have some equipment here and I like to exercise at home as well. So let me know if that's something you'd like to see. I feel like now... If I put my mind to something and I really commit to it and I'm consistent that I can accomplish anything and so I'm really looking forward to the coming year. And if I'm consistent and can work towards my goals and I have that attitude of I can accomplish anything, you can absolutely do the same thing. So you might have had some false starts in the past with your fitness or your weight loss or your health journey in general. But now is as good a time as any to either get started or continue and carry on and work towards your goals. And seeing what I can accomplish and how I can change my body and feel stronger and more, even more empowered and how I change and my mindset shifts and all these things over the course of the next month three months, six months, year, two years, what things look like a few years down the road or coming around my 40th birthday, right? So I am looking at this, you know, from a short-term perspective and a long-term perspective. Yeah, I'm maintaining that short-term outlook as well as the long-term perspective and considering where I am now, 37 years old, and what things might look like in the next year or two, you know, coming up to my 40th birthday, what might that look like and what I can do to be as healthy and fit as possible. I've actually gotten a jump on my resolution as well because I'm the kind of person that once I make a decision and I feel strongly about it, I just go for it. I wasn't going to wait until January 1st to get going. So I've actually hired a personal trainer at the gym and she's lovely. We've been working together for a couple weeks now and I really wanted to just have a really solid foundation and build my confidence in the weight room. That lovely 
trainer that I'm talking about is actually my dear friend Charity. Fun story, fun fact, if you haven't heard me mention it before on the channel, but I hired Charity to be my personal trainer. She trained me, she was amazing, super great coach, super great personal trainer. If you're in the Kingston area, definitely look her up. But we actually became really, really good friends and ended up training together and we developed a great friendship. So kind of funny how looking back a year ago, oh, I hired a trainer. And now a year later, I'm like, oh, she's one of my best friends. <laughs> Even though I have a fitness background, I thought, you know, there's so much that I don't know. And I'm aware that there's so much that I don't know and so much I can learn from a professional personal trainer. So I went ahead and um, hired someone to help me out with that and coach me and get me started and get me going with a program and um, just have me build my confidence in that area uh, before I go it alone. Yeah, you don't know what you don't know. And even if you're a professional, even if you have some expertise in a particular area, I think it's always valuable to seek out a coach or seek out another professional who can teach you, train you, um, look at you from a different perspective, right? Because sometimes it's hard to be objective with ourselves. So yeah, it was really helpful, amazing experience to hire a trainer who was really knowledgeable really helpful and set me up for a good foundation to continue and carry on and continue to build muscle and feel good and happy and fit and energized and have fun in the gym. My goal really is to become the most fit, strong, athletic version of myself that I can be. That is still my goal, to be as healthy, fit, and strong as possible. And I think that looks different for everybody. It's not always a look. It's not always an aesthetic. But it's more about what you can actually do and how you feel. And I love feeling strong and capable. And it really builds my confidence and makes me feel so good and I'm so empowered. I know not everyone loves the gym, not everyone will really relate with this aspect, but being someone who was chronically ill and prior to that having cancer, I know what it's like to be unhealthy, like really, really, really unhealthy. I know what it's like to have chronic pain, have chronic fatigue, have really bad symptoms of endometriosis and asthma and be really struggling. I know what it's like to not be able to move my body and not be able to do the things that I want to do. So I am grateful every single day that I'm able to move my body and do what I want and feel really strong and capable and empowered. And I remember having a hard time carrying Riordan around when he was a baby sometimes because I was in so much pain and had so much fatigue and now he's seven and I can throw him around and pick him up so that's really really cool to see how much has changed in that time. It just goes to show that I had way more control and way more power over my destiny than I ever thought and making those healthy lifestyle changes completely changed my life and if you can have a taste of that and eat more plants and get better sleep and improve these things, that's amazing. And it will really improve your life, make you a happier, healthier person. And it's important to me for many reasons. Part of it is health and longevity and mobility. And when I see 70 and 80 year old bodybuilders, I'm so inspired and so excited to see what they're up to. And I just find that so motivating and so inspiring. So further to this, not even just bodybuilders or people who are older and really, really fit. I so admire people who are older and they are working on their fitness regardless of their level or regardless of what they're actually doing, when I see older people 
in the gym doing their thing, whatever it is, I am so inspired by them. And I want to be that person who's in the gym and doing my thing and fit at 70, 80, 90, 100, hopefully. (laughs) So I love to see older people in the gym doing their thing and rocking it out and working to improve their mobility or improve their stamina or build their strength. I absolutely admire them so much and I aspire to be like them one day. And this kind of leads into my first tip to create a resolution that really resonates with you and that you feel really passionately about. Yeah. Yeah. How many times have you just made a resolution in January and then you kind of fall off, whatever, and then the next January comes and you just make the same resolution again without without really thinking about it? It's just, oh, this is the resolution I make. I'm going to do whatever. I'm going to get healthier. I'm going to lose weight or whatever it is. And then it just falls off and you do the same thing and rinse, repeat. So really thinking, really considering what is important to you in this moment, not what was important to you last year or what was important to you, you know, a few months ago, really considering where you are right now in this moment, what's important, what's essential and how can you improve your life, feel better, feel healthier, what's going to contribute positively to a healthy lifestyle, a healthier lifestyle. If you just make a relit resolution because it's just kind of the thing that people do this time of year and, oh yeah, I'm going to make a resolution to lose weight because it's just kind of what I do every year without putting much thought into it. I recommend taking a step back. Is weight loss really something that you want? Is it something that's really important to you? Or is it something that maybe you're feeling an external pressure some somewhere to do it but it's not really that important to you. I recommend brainstorming and really thinking and considering and even journaling about what is really really important to you, what do you want to build or how you how do you want to change, what do you want to look like or feel like or what do you want to be able to do in the coming months or at the end of the year. Once you have a good idea of the resolution you want to make or the intention you want to set for the year, the goal you want to make that's really, really important to you, the next step is to make a plan and make a reasonable plan. I think sometimes the pitfall we have with making a plan is trying to do too much all at once and trying to revamp everything all at once getting overwhelmed and then giving up completely. So if we can build and layer habits and make our way and give ourselves a pat on the back as we go and as things work out, then we build our confidence, we are on to the next thing, we keep going and going and building and getting to where we want to go. And the other thing is if you make a plan, you take action and it doesn't quite work out for whatever reason, something's not a good fit, Instead of completely giving up and just abandoning your resolution, looking at it a little deeper. Okay, why isn't this working? Am I trying to do four workouts a week and prior to the new year I was doing zero? So I'm in a lot of pain and, you know, XYZ is happening. And how to be a bit more reasonable with our expectations of ourselves and realistic honestly with what we are able to do with our time and our energy and our schedules. I have been going to the gym regularly you know three to four to five sometimes days a week and taking classes and so for me it's reasonable to continue to go to the gym three four five days a week and to just shift some of those training sessions rather than going to classes into my individual training sessions either with my trainer or on my own and getting started with my strength training. Making a realistic plan is so important and I've made this mistake so many times in the past, so many times in the past, where I have um, my resolution, I have a clear goal, a clear intention, But then when it comes to the actual planning, I would start out 
really intense and really strong and I would burn myself out within, you know, two weeks, three weeks, a month. This has happened so many times, countless times, so many times. I start out 100% super strong, doing all the things, and then I burn out. I can't keep up, and then I abandon it rather than taking a more moderate and reasonable approach and having it be sustainable. And starting where you're at and building from there is a much better strategy than jumping in and trying to go from zero days in the gym to five days a week every week. If you can build up to five days a week and that's what you want to do, cool. But it's extremely difficult to go from zero to five and to just be consistent in that. So I think starting out a little bit smaller and seeing where you can actually fit it into your schedule and make it work is a lot more reasonable and will help you turn your resolution into a reality and an actionable plan that you can actually follow and actually do for the long haul. My next tip is to consider other factors related to your goal. So for me with strength training, Obviously, I need to be strength training. I need to go to the gym and do my workouts and get my workouts in. But it's more than just that, right? I need to think about how I'm fueling myself. How, what am I eating? Am I hydrated? I need to consider my sleep. I need to consider rest and recovery. So there are other factors involved that need to be considered. Yeah, so with fitness, this is really, really important. And I would say with developing an overall healthy lifestyle, considering these other factors is really important as well. Oftentimes, we hone in on the food, we hone in on the nutrition, we maybe think about moving our bodies, but we don't necessarily think too much about the sleep aspect or stress management or other things. So I think those are important considerations as well when looking at an overall healthy lifestyle. And it doesn't mean you have to do all the things all at once and get really overwhelmed like, oh, I need to work on my sleep. I need to work on stress. I need to work on food and this and that and the other. It's like, okay, breathe. Start with one thing and you'll build and make your way and improve and make progress over time. And I think that's the same for many resolutions. For example, weight loss, you know, it's not just about the food and hydration. It's about mindset. It's about those other factors that I mentioned in terms of, you know, sleep, stress management, exercise. Mindset is huge with any goal, any target. Mindset is massive, very underrated. I think people are starting to talk about it more now, but it is so vitally important and it colors everything. It, if your perspective is different, it shifts the entire way that you show up and the decisions that you make and why you make them and what you do and why you do it. So shifting your mindset, having a growth mindset, super duper important for setting goals and making progress towards them and achieving them. And so it's important to consider other factors that are related and will impact your behaviors and routines and your goals. My next tip is to make a contingency plan. So make a plan B or a plan C. Yes, I didn't even remember that I got into this in this video, but making a plan B is so wise, intelligent, smart, important, <laughs> valuable, helpful, because life happens, stuff happens, things come up, unexpected things. And so when you do have a backup plan or you do have a contingency plan and maybe instead of doing your workouts in the gym, you'll do them from home or, you know, whatever backup plan you have that's workable Maybe you put it on the back burner for a week or for a couple of days, but then you jump right back in, right? So having a backup plan 
super important, super helpful. And it's wise to make a backup plan while you're having a good time and while things are easy and you're feeling motivated and easy breezy, it's the new year, let's go. Make your backup plan now so that if and when something comes up, the stressful thing, moment, event happens, you have that plan already in your back pocket, ready to go. So you can breathe, focus on what you need to focus on, and use your backup plan. Run a few what-if scenarios and make a plan for what you will do in the event of XYZ. So for me, strength training at the gym, I have a few big concerns. One big concern with the pandemic is that the gyms could close at any moment. So if I don't have access to the gym, what am I going to do? I'm going to do what I can at home. I do have some dumbbells, I have calisthenics bars, and I have my own body weight to work with. So I'll do what I can at home to continue my workouts and they won't be the same. It, you know, I won't have access to the same equipment, but I'll do the best I can to continue training. That's a good point. You always have your own body weight to work with. So even if your gym facility closes for some reason, or you can't get to the gym one day, even if you have no equipment at home whatsoever, you have your own body weight to work with. So you can always do some planks or try to get some push-ups in or do progressions to get your first push-up if that's something you're working towards. So there's always something you can do, even if it doesn't look the same as it always does. I used to get caught in this mindset of, oh, if I can't go running for half an hour or running for an hour or to the gym for an hour, I just won't do it. And now I'm much more flexible where it's like, okay, I only have about 15 or 20 minutes. Am I going to do a home workout or am I going to get to the gym, do what I can there and get out and move on with my day? And then I choose my own adventure. I'm happy with the choice. I move forward. I do the best I can in the moment. And I encourage you to do the same. Other concerns could be if I get sick or if I get injured. And I think those two are really difficult because it's easy to say, oh, if I'm sick or injured, I'll just push through. I'll just, Ur. but that's probably the worst thing <laughs> you can do. And in my case, if I get sick or injured, my plan is to rest, recover, take a deep breath, do what I can as I can, start back small and just do what I can with what I'm able to do. Making rest and recovery part of the plan, very important. Some people naturally just can be calm and rest and chill out. And other people are a lot more active and a lot more, I'm going to do the next thing and the next thing and next thing. So if you're one of those people who has a hard time with calm and a hard time with rest, then that's something you need to prioritize, practice, and schedule in. My next tip is to track your progress and reevaluate as you go. So it's important to decide how you're going to track your progress. If you're on a weight loss journey, I highly recommend using measurements, progress photos, um, paying attention to your energy levels, paying attention to how your clothing fits. The scale is a great tool. It can be really helpful. It can give you a data point, but it's only one tool in the toolbox. So I would say don't obsess over your weight. Don't get too, too caught up. And I mean, I have lost a significant amount of weight, but I think looking at other factors as well and what your body is capable of and how you feel those things are equally as important as the number on the scale yeah so taking in multiple data points so that you can really evaluate your progress and track it in a way that is a bit more well-rounded so for example for weight loss not just looking at the scale but looking at these other factors is really really important 
if you just look at the number on the scale, sometimes that can be a little bit deceiving and a little bit discouraging. Whereas if you're looking at progress photos or you're looking at measurements, that can give you a more broad picture of your progress and how you're doing and a more accurate picture, honestly, if you're taking more data points and looking at other things. And so for training at the gym, it was about lifting more weight, pushing more weight, being able to do more with my body. This year, I do really want to work on pull-ups. I got a pull-up bar at home, so I'm going to be using that and playing with that. I cannot do a pull-up. I have been working on shoulder retractions and hanging and things like that, but I cannot do a pull-up yet. That is one of my goals for this year. I also want to do 25 push-ups unbroken. I can usually do 10 to 15 with good form, and then that's about it. So 25 is my goal. And if I'm able to reach these goals before the end of the year, then I will add new goals. Maybe one pull-up will turn into a goal to do three or five and we'll see how we do. So for the Plant Fit Meg channel, Fit is my middle name, and I am going to go ahead and do what I can this year to really fit, no pun intended, <laughs> that name and that title. So yes, I do want to show that you can build muscle, gain strength, be really fit on a plant-based diet, and eat mostly whole plant foods with the occasional things that are outside of that bound and still be really healthy and really fit. Keep it simple and have fun. A few things that I'm really looking at and thinking about this year are learning, connection, and community. So I think that this year is going to be a big learning year and a big growth year. I have that desire to be a student again and learn. So I'm not sure if that will look like courses and look like actual training or education formally, or if it will be more so reading and listening to podcasts and things like that. That's a bit more informal, but still gathering information and learning. Either way, I'm looking forward to it and I think it'll be a lot of fun. I'm also looking forward to building more connections with you and also in my own area, my new town, and making friends and dancing and um, just being kind of easy breezy about it, not pushing anything, but just making really nice, genuine connections with people, chatting, letting people know who I am and what I'm about, and if it resonates with them, then awesome. Happy to have you here, thrilled that you're part of the Plant Fit Meg community. Thank you so much for being here. I really want to continue to build this community and connect with you more. I'm going to be using the community tab on YouTube more to put up little polls or maybe behind the scenes stuff or just to chat, just to ask questions, ask random questions and see what's up with you guys, what's new, how are you doing? So absolutely leave me comments there. As always, you can leave me comments here in the comment section on YouTube or reach out to me through social media or my website. I'm coaching clients one-on-one -on -one to switch to a plant-based diet, lose weight on a plant-based diet, develop healthy habits and a healthy mindset. So reach out to me if you're interested in that. I'm wishing you all the best in 2023. Have a great year. I'm so excited to continue to share simple recipes, healthy lifestyle tips, and help you out in your healthy lifestyle journey and share things that I wish I knew when I was getting started and going through my health journey and my weight loss journey. I hope you're having an amazing day and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Mm -hmm.